Hey fellas, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna take you through several ways of practicing arpeggios in one octave and two octaves as well. So grab your bass and let's get started. In this lesson, I'm going to focus on major seven arpeggios. In the previous lesson, I've introduced how to play the arpeggios of the major triad. So if you haven't checked that out, do check it out. By now, you know what a major seven arpeggio is. You get a major seven arpeggio when you add the seven to your major triad so that becomes a major seven arpeggio that's a g major seven arpeggio because i'm in the key of g you can also look at major seven arpeggios as a stack of thirds together for instance this is my g all right and the third of that g is this now this is my new note and the third of that new note is a third of this is that so it's like a stack of thirds put together when you play the notes okay so this is my g and the third is a b and then the third of this b is a d and the third of this d is what an f sharp okay or in solfa notation this is my do the third of the do becomes a me the third of the me becomes a so that of the so becomes a T. Okay, so all right, so you can see it as a, a stack of thirds put together. So let's get into the concept right away. For one octave, you can decide to localize your fingering position and play all of them in that position. All right, so for the one, two. So in the reverse order So always try and practice in uh, descending and ascending manner or ascending and descending manner. All right. So back and forth, back and forth. Now to, so that is for the localized position. Okay. But it's always advisable to practice along the board. Okay. So along the board, this is how they look like. So that's the second. That's the third, four, fifth, six, seven, and back to the eighth. So what you need to pay attention to while practicing along the board, okay, is your fingering. All right, you realize the one, the four, and the five are major notes, so they have similar shapes, and so they will have similar fingerings. So you realize I start with this one for the one, the four, and the five, and the minor notes I start with this one because they also have similar shapes. Okay, so again for the one, all right, for the two, okay, so I'm starting with this finger. So for the three, two, three, they are minus. So okay. Now for the four, I use this. Just like the one. For the five. Okay. 
Now for the sixth, I go back to this. Because it's a minor just like the two and three. For the seven as well, then back to the one. So again. This is how you practice it. Okay, you practice in a zigzag fashion, all right? And then uh, you reverse that zigzag fashion as well. It helps a lot, okay? So practicing in a zigzag fashion looks like this. It's kind of a shifting exercise for the arpeggios. What it entails is when you play one arpeggio, you shift and then descend to the next. Then you shift, climb to the next, shift, descend to the next in that order. All right. So for the one, my arpeggio ends here for the one. So I shift. All right. And play the second arpeggio. All right. I, I play the arpeggio for the second in a descending manner. So. So, this is my arpeggio for the second, okay? So, I shift. Okay, then to the third, I shift again. Alright. It ends here. Okay, so for the fourth, I shift. Okay. And play it in the descending manner. So for the fifth, so going to the sixth, I shift. Seventh. Then. So once you are here, you can also reverse the whole shifting method. Okay, just turn it upside down. So. Now, when it comes to practicing them in two octaves, there are usually two ways that you can do that. The first one is... Alright, uh, so I'm in the key of F now. So this is one octave. The second one starts from here. This one kind of involves a, like a stretching exercise, all right? And you realize I'm using only one. I'm starting with the index finger. Okay, so you play a third year, the one, you play a third year. Then you repeat the same shape. Okay, you stretch. So the 
Halt. That's the concept, okay? So you can also practice in a zigzag fashion, just the same way we practice the one octave method. All right, so for this one, it's gonna look something like this. All right, then you slide to the second and play it in the reverse order. So the second in the reverse order will be to the four. That's one way of practicing them in two octaves. The second way is you play two notes per string. Okay, so it's a build up on the stretching exercise. Okay, so all right, so that is one octave. Then you go to another octave. two notes per string okay so we get to your second octave to the 
a second. So you're basically just moving the same shape around, okay? So that's another cool way of practicing them in two octaves. The importance of these two octaves is that it makes you master your fretboard. I've seen a lot of people asking, how do you master your fretboard? Do a lesson on how to master your fretboard. All these lessons are designed for you to be able to master your fretboard easily when you practice them. So again, you can practice them using the ascending and descending approach. Okay, so. So yeah, those are some really, really, really cool ways of practicing arpeggios and mastering your fretboard at the same time. So if you have any questions, if you have any comments, leave them in the comment section below. Do make sure you subscribe, you share, and you like this video as well. See you in the next video.